Hello and welcome to yet another Nuclear Craft Spotlight. This time we're looking at the new Molten Salt Reactors. Um, they've been added very recently. Well, actually they haven't been added um, completely recently. Uh, they were added a few versions back, but now everything's craftable and you can actually use them for something useful because the whole point of Molten Salt Reactors is that you're using um, salt-based fuel and salt-based coolant, uh, active cooling, and the active coolant is meant to be heated up in the reactor, and then you send that off into a heat exchanger to turn water into steam that you can use in turbines. And the heat exchangers were added recently in version 2.12, and I'm certainly going to make a video about them as soon as I can after this video. Um, but this one's all about actually how to use the modern salt reactor, how to um, set it up, how to get the coolant actually heated up. Um, so the first thing, obviously, to look at is how to actually make your molten salt reactor fuel. Um, so the the um, way it actually works is that the fuel is based on um, lithium beryllium fluoride. It's a lithium beryllium fluoride mixture and the coolant is a potassium sodium uh, alloy mixture in with the uh, sort of coolants that you use to make the passive coolers. Uh, but I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. But for now I'm going to show you the sort of process that you might use to try and get some nuclear fuel. Um, so here we've got a load of uranium ore being melted up into molten uranium. Molten uranium is then reacting with fluorine. You get that from various places, mainly electrolyzing hydrofluoric acid. You react that with your molten uranium. You get yourself some of this um, uh, uranium fluoride. You then mix this with some fly salt mixture uh, that you get from uh, your lithium fluoride and beryllium fluoride, which you get from various places. That makes your um, fly salt solution of uranium fluoride. Um, I'm then centrifuging this, this is the sort of isotope separator but for fluids, into 238 and 235 uranium flybe, and then I'm mixing that back together again to make that LEU fuel, just like you would with, uh, you know, the solid fuels. You um, isotope separate and then combine back together again, and as you can see we're getting a bunch of LEU-235 fluoride fuel. So this is exactly what we need um, to start uh, getting our uh, stuff going. So. That is the fuel that we need, and that's exactly what you're going to use in your molten salt fission reactors. So if we head over here, uh, as you can see, the first thing to notice about it is that it works a little bit differently to the old solid fuel reactors. This is actually using the multi-block API, um, sort of um, the one that's used for extreme reactors. Uh, it's a little bit different though, so there are specific blocks for the frame here. We've got molten salt reactor frame uh, used to sort of give you the sort of shape of the cuboids, the size of it. And then I've got some molten salt reactor walls in the panels here. And I've also got some transparent version of those on the top. Uh, I haven't actually finished off here. Uh, as you can see, you can just have a mixture of them as you expect. And I've also got a, a molten salt fission controller here. And when I right click on this controller, you'll see that it says here, I've got a molten salt reactor five by four by seven. So that's the first thing to know. You don't build it like the old one. You don't need to worry about edges or anything. You build the frame along the edges and then you build the wall on the actual sort of uh, faces. Uh, and you can go inside and you can mess around while the reactor is actually on. But of course, if you have radiation enabled, that's going to be pretty dangerous. Uh, but just, let, uh, just so you know, you can sort of get inside the reactor and you won't break it if you work inside it. So now that we're inside the reactor, uh, let's talk through the sort of things that you can actually build in here. Um, obviously, the first two important things uh, that you can think of is the molten salt fission vessel and the heaters as well, which are going to heat our coolant. Now, if we look at the recipes for the fission vessel, it will tell you a bunch of information. It will tell you the base heat gen, just like it will, you know, the, there's base heat, there's heat generation, just like in the old um, solid fuel reactors. And there's also process time. Um, so it tells you here that this uh, four millibuckets of TBU fluoride fuel will last for 11 seconds and so forth. You go down, if the time is quite small, it will tell you in ticks and whatever. So those are all the different recipes. It's exactly the same fuels as before. Um, the only difference, of course, is that there's no oxide fuel. You just have um, the fly salt mixtures. So there's about half as many recipes. Um, so that's how you deplete your fuel. When you deplete your fuel, uh, you then send it into a centrifuge. Uh, you first of all remove the fly mixture. Uh, you then remove the fluorine. And then finally you have your raw depleted fuel. And if you put this through the centrifuge, you'll get the depleted products, just like you would get from the fuel reprocessor for the solid fuels. So it works exactly the same way, pretty much, um, except the added complication of the fluorine and the fly, uh, and also it's all uh, in liquid form. So that's pretty much the way that the depletion works. Um, so I won't go too much into that because you can figure that out. Um, but anyway, back to this. Uh, you'll see here that we've also got the uh, salt coolant heater. Um, the use for this is to heat our um, sodium potassium uh, eutectic alloy. Um, you can see here that this is the base 
uh, alloy, which is sort of acts like the equivalent of the passive water coolers. But you can see here that we've also got redstone mixed in, which is like the uh, redstone equivalent, the quartz equivalent, gold, etc., etc. So all the equivalents of the passive coolers. Um, by default, the cooling rates are basically just four times that of the base uh, passive rate. So you can see here that this is 240 heat per tick. The water cooler is 60. Um, the this one's 360 heat per tick, that's four times the 90 for the passive redstone and so forth. And you can also see that the um, reactor rules are still there. So for example, the standard uh, NAC needs to touch at least a fission vessel or an active moderator. That's just like the passive water cooler. You'll see here that the redstone needs to touch at least one active fission vessel, just like how the passive redstone cooler needs to touch at least one uh, cell um, to go to a more complicated one like the diamond. Uh, this one needs to touch at least one active um, NAC coolant heater, which is the equivalent of a passive water, and needs to touch also at least one active NAC quartz coolant heater. So all the rules are exactly the same, except we're using heaters and vessels instead of uh, coolers and cells. So if you're used to the sort of passive rules, you'll get used to this pretty quickly, I think. Uh, but the difference is here, of course, is that we have to actually pump the liquids directly into these things. Um, you can't just put any fuel in here. Um, this is, doesn't actually have any inventory at all. You have to get the liquid fuel directly into the vessels, and there's a number of ways to do that, um, and there's only one way to get the coolant into the heaters. Okay, so let's talk about how to get the fluids onto the inside. Now, this is the simplest way. Uh, this is the only way to get coolant into the inside for and outside for the heaters, um, but this is just one of two ways to get uh, fuel in for the vessels. Um, now I'm just going to use this creative tank of um, LU-235 fluoride fly fuel. Um, of course usually you take it from your processing plant or whatever over there. Um, but I'm just going to use creative portable tanks because it's just a bit easier for me. Um, and I'm going to just switch that open and I'm going to just literally pump uh, the uh, fuel into this vessel and you'll see it starts to fill up. Now we're going to head into the inside here and get into my other inventory, close this up, and you will see that there is now some fuel in there. Now there's two ways to get the fuel into the vessels. Um, the first and most direct way is to literally just put the vessel um, onto the vent, uh, just touching it, and you will see that the fuel goes straight in there, and it's already eaten a bit of it ready to process. Um, so if the vent is next to a vessel, it will automatically push uh, fuel into it. Uh, so like that, that we've just seen there. Uh, otherwise, it will not push any fuel. Um, so for example, if I go back here and put a, a fluid duct, you'll see that it doesn't sort of pull the fuel out and put it into the vessel. You do need to use a servo or whatever sort of pulling uh, device for the pipes uh, that you're using uh, needs. And you will see that the fuel comes out as you expect. So there we are. That's uh, going in as we expected. Uh, now, there are uh, ways to do this that don't need uh, pipes going everywhere. So imagine uh, you had a whole bunch of these vessels uh, lined up for some reason in your design. You had a whole bunch of them. Let's get there. You had a whole bunch of them lined up like this. Say you had like five of them in a row. Um, luckily, you do not need to put pipes along the whole uh, top of this. Um, you only need to put a pipe onto the first one. Uh, so let's do that. So let's put a pipe on there. Uh, let's get rid of all these for now. So let's pipe some fuel into this thing like that and you will see the fuel goes in but now what we can do is we can actually use the sidedness of these vessels so with an empty hand um, if you right click on a side of the vessel um, you will actually change the mode of the side that it's uh, that you're uh, clicking on so you can go from the default mode so the default mode is sort of just the uh, passive mode it will just take in fuel it will also push depleted fuel out of vessel uh, out to vents um, so it's just sort of the, the default way that the uh, vessel works. The um, disabled mode, which you just put it into there, means that no fluid will pass in and out of this side. You then got depleted out, which is basically saying um, push any depleted fuel out of this side into other vessels to pass it down the line to another vent, say. So if you've got a whole row of these things and you've got another vent over here that's going to take all the depleted fuel, so maybe we'll set that up to show what that looks like. Um, and there's also finally fuel spread, which is the thing we're going to use because we want to spread the fuel across a whole line of vessels. So I'm going to put down another vessel now, head over into vessels, and you'll see that this vessel now has more fuel because it's just being pushed from this one into this one. Um, and I'm now going to put another one into fuel spread. So let's do that. Let's put that down. Another one now gets fuel, and you can, and so on and so forth. So every time you put a fuel spread um, next to another vessel, the uh, fuel will continue going down the line. Say you want to do something a bit more complicated. Say you wanted to go down the line um, all the way to the end here. So let's say, let's just go down a few more. Um, so uh, let's 
put that into uh, fuel spread and then another one and then let's just do one more fuel spread and another one say that we wanted to now uh, have uh, fuel go up this way so we need to have um, fuel spread up this way but say we wanted all of the depleted fuel um, not to uh, go along this line uh, but we want it to go up here instead so what we have to do there is direct where the de depleted fuel goes. Um, to do that, what we can actually do is if we hold down shift and right click, we actually edit the opposite side of this block. And I'm going to put this into depleted out mode. That means that any depleted fuel that this produces will head back into this vessel. And then what we're going to do is we're going to um, have, I think actually that should be fine. So the, deplete, the fuel will come in, depleted goes back here, and it should then be pushed into this vessel. So let's just uh, continue this line here. So uh, let's put this into uh, fuel spread, vessel, fuel spread, vessel. And then let's have a final fluid out, uh, sorry, depleted out here. And then we'll have another vent. So we'll get ourselves a vent, put it there. And then finally a fluid duct like that. And if you have it on a uh, fluid uh, depleted out mode then it will actually automatically push the depleted fuel out so what will happen here is that the fuel is being spread across all of these vessels um, but when it gets to this one it will actually because i've set the side to depleted out back on this side it will push the depleted uh, fuel back this way all the others will just pass its depleted fuel along the line it will get to this one push it up here and push it along and all the depleted fuel will come out of there so say you've got some complex design where you've got like a row of vessels but you want the vents to be in certain places you want to make use of that sidedness to direct the fuel and depleted uh, products in the way that you want to. So let's actually turn this reactor on. Um, you can see here there's quite a lot of heat gen. Uh, what I'm actually going to do to make sure that we don't get any problems for now before we do any cooling is I'm going to head into the configs, uh, heat, it's not heat exchanger, it's molten salt configs, and uh, disable meltdowns. Oh, actually, that won't work because I'm on a server. Okay, maybe we need to do some cooling first and then we'll have a look at that, how that works. So cooling, um, the way cooling works uh, is pretty similar. You want to use vents. So let me pop out here. Uh, let's get ourselves another portable tank. So here I'm going to get some eutetic nat redstone mixture. The reason I'm going to use that is because um, if you remember, if we look at the uses here, you'll see that the uh, redstone needs to touch at least one active fission vessel. So I'm just going to put, line these uh, all the way that, along where the, uh, the vessels are. So um, this obviously is a very inefficient design. You usually spend a long time sort of designing these things. Uh, but I'm going to just put this, oh, not sand. I'm going to put this... Um, creative tank i'm going to put it um, up there that's good enough and let's uh, save this load up the molten salt stuff head back inside here and let's put ourselves um, actually i need to head back and put a fluid duct so fluid duct right click that and let's get a vent put the vent here now that's fill filling up with redstone mixture head inside and now let's set up a bunch of uh, vessels uh, sorry heaters so Let's get our heaters and start placing them down. So these need to be adjacent to at least one vi fission vessel. Um, if they're not adjacent to a fission vessel, just like the um, oh, I need to turn that on, just like the uh, coolers in the uh, solid fuel reactor, if they're not in a valid position, they will literally do nothing. They will do no cooling whatsoever. So I'm going to bring a fluid duct here, and I'm going to get um, some redstone knack mixture into here and you'll see when i come in here that the cooling rate has gone up it's gone well it's gone down to minus 360 heat per tick so i'm actually starting to remove some heat um, and what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to um, just line these up across all of these reactors uh, sorry all of these vessels um, so of course i'm going to have to do the same thing as before i'm going to have coolant spread and then i'm going to have heater coolant spread heater coolant spread heater now i'm going to do the same thing as i did before here so i'm going to have the coolant spread into this final heater and then i'm going to shift right click to have the hot coolant go back out that way and then i'm going to have everything go up this way so heater and finally here so now we should have a uh, eutetic nat redstone and all of these heaters yep looks like we've got the right thing and if we head in here, you can see now that the uh, the cooling rate has gone up massively, but we're still at a net heat gen of 2640. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply um, get a fluid duct around here and set up some more of these heaters. 
coolant out and then I think that actually might be enough but actually what I need to do is I need to join this up don't I because otherwise that hot coolant's not going to go anywhere so let's continue this upwards heater oops I didn't, that doesn't really matter okay so now uh, these two heaters are going to uh, I think what we'll do is we'll have them output the hot coolant um, to the same fluid duct here. I'm going to disable this thing so that nothing gets mixed up. You can see that won't join up and then we'll have the hot coolant coming out of um, Let's have a vent over there actually. That would probably be the best place. So let's get a vent My goodness isn't the quark tab thing really cool vent. Okay, so now you can see that we've got our hot coolant going out of this vent here and what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to just send them down uh, into a bin because we're not going to actually deal with the hot coolant or the depleted fuel. Obviously, normally you'd have the depleted fuel go into a series of centrifuge and reprocess it all, as I showed before, and the hot coolant would go into a heat exchanger. But for now, we're not going to actually use the hot coolant. Um, in the next video, we will. But for now, I'm literally just going to put a bin down. So uh, let's get a bin quickly. Put them there so that that doesn't actually do anything. Okay, so that should now work. I need to put some servos on here. To actually pull it out okay so now if we turn this reactor on it should actually function so you see we've got a net heat gen of 600 heat per tick um, and we're good to go that means it's going to be a safe reactor so we can turn this on now and it's going to start going I'm actually going to go into the inside here and uh, see what's actually happening so you can see already that we're actually getting some hot redstone coolant coming out. If we uh, look at this, uh, we can't actually see it. It's going out too fast. Uh, let's actually quickly uh, stop this uh, servo from running. Um, so let's do that quickly. Head back inside. And you will see hot coolant is starting to be created. Hot eutectic NAC redstone is being created. It's being created very quickly, actually, because we've got so many heaters. So let's turn that thing back on again. So there it all is. And at the same time, you will see here... Um, it's quite difficult to see actually. Maybe we should actually quickly turn this servo off. You will see that we're actually um, producing at a rate of, I think the fuel that we're using is probably about uh, six, every six seconds it produces some. So you can see we're starting to get some millibuckets of that depleted LU-235 fuel. So it's all working as expected. Um, hopefully it's sort of intuitive the way that sort of pushing and pulling works. Uh, oh, hang on, let's turn that servo back on again. Get it all flowing. And there we go, we've actually got a stable reactor that's producing a grand total of, if we head down here, uh, reducing a grand total of uh, roughly, uh, well actually what you have to do to work out exactly how much uh, cooling you're doing is you have to take uh, the difference between those numbers because obviously that's sort of uh, redundant um, heat gen. So we're producing about 5,800 heat per tick, which is very, very good. Um, there isn't a very easy way to convert that into RF per tick in an eventual steam turbine, mainly because I haven't actually added the steam turbines yet. You can use steam in other turbines though, and I'll show exactly how you do that in the next video. Um, but basically, usually um, the way it works is um, for every, uh, remember every cooler is four times as efficient. And if you take uh, one uh, heat to be roughly one RF per tick, um, then this will tell you that uh, usually in a passive cooled reactor this will be producing roughly 6,000 um, RF per tick. You basically want to double or triple that. So in general, a molten salt reactor design, when you've got the heat exchangers going and you've got the steam turbines going, will produce maybe two, three, maybe even four times as much power as, as a equivalent uh, solid fuel design. That's really just because it's more expensive and requires more maintenance. So it's, I think it seems fair. So that's pretty much how um, to cool the reactor. Um, and how to fuel it. There is actually another way to fuel reactors um, that we'll do quickly. So let's just head outside. You'll notice that I'm being a little bit vague and a little bit, uh, I'm not showing you like um, a really detailed design. That's because I sort of want to leave it up to the player to work out how to do a really cool design. Um, I promise you that there are some people out there, I've already seen some images of some really cool molten salt reactors being built with crazy designs, pillars of vessels and heaters that look awesome. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to remove this vent. Um, so let's get rid of this vent. Um, and we're going to replace it with something new in a second. I'm also going to get re remove that fluid duct. I'm also going to remove this fluid duct here, and I'm going to remove this vent. And I'm instead going to add some distributors and retrievers. So the distributors um, will just add uh, fuel to every single vessel that it can 
inside the reactor structure. And the retriever will take all the depleted fuel it can from any vessel in the structure. So this is a way of accessing your vessels sort of a lot more directly, straight from the wall of the salt reactor. Um, now, by default, um, the rate at which these uh, fuel distributors um, distribute fuel is at a rate of roughly um, four vessels. It can support four vessels at once. So in this uh, design, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine uh, vessel, so we're going to need three of these distributors. So let's actually just set three of those up. So that should be good. So three distributors, um, and let's uh, get some fuel into those things. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, and we're also going to need the same number of retrievers on the other side. So let's set up three retrievers. There we go. And let's also get some servos going. Boom. So when we turn the reactor on, the molten salt fuel will be going into these um, distribut distributors, they will be going into the vessels, and as you can see, the retrievers are actually taking the depleted fuel out. So that's a better way of um, trying to access like tightly spaced um, vessels which are hard to get to with pipes and so you might be able to use up the space inside the reactor more efficiently. Um, as I said, you can't do this for heaters, you are going to have to pump it in uh, manually, but um, for the vessels, you can save a bit of space. The final thing that I will say, uh, there's actually two things I will say that uh, are quite important. The first thing, let's turn the reactor off again. The first thing is these beams. So there is actually a special block. Oops, my OBS sometimes glitches out when I place blocks. Um, the first thing is these beams. So if we head to my inventory and we look at beams, um, these reactor beams will support blocks that are sort of floating in the air. So say if I have um, a, a vessel um, up here say for some reason um, so you can see uh, oops you can see that it's sort of floating in the air and you can see it's actually not receiving any fuel that's because it's not um, sort of connected to the rest of the structure but if I get a beam and I just connect it to the structure like that you'll see it actually starting to get fuel because the, now the um, the structure recognizes that vessel being there so if you've got any floating parts be sure to connect them up with beams and then it will be there ready to uh, ready to roll uh, and the final thing, um, inside the reactor anyway, is these uh, moderators. I didn't really explain them very well. Um, they work in exactly the same way as beryllium or graphite do in that reactor over there. So if you place them next to vessels, so let's see, the efficiency at the moment is uh, 240. Um, so say if I was to place a um, graphite, well, it's actually a moderator block here. You'll see now that the efficiency has gone up to 243. Uh, and the, the net heat rate, uh, the net heat gen has gone up a little bit. Let's place another one. See, it goes up a little bit. So these moderators uh, act just in the same way as graphite and beryllium. Uh, and remember, you can place um, vessels between moderators uh, in a chain of up to four, and it will um, still increase the efficiency uh, as if they were adjacent. Um, the final thing to say uh, is, if we head out here, you can also use redstone ports. So I know a lot of people like to build reactors that are heat positive. Um, there's not really a good reason to do that other than to really pack um, a lot of, uh, you know, get as much out of your fuels as you can. Usually a safe design is just easier and, you know, you don't have to worry about it at all. But if you do build a heat positive design, then you can use these uh, redstone ports. Now, the first thing you can do with these redstone ports is you can actually turn the reactor on from them. So I can just put a redstone signal on here and turn on the reactor from this port. So that's one thing it can be used for. The second thing it can be used for, if we just quickly uh, head out, let's just get this block. You can also get a comparator and you can use uh, this in the same way that you'd use for the solid fuel fission reactors. This thing will read the heat level. So if the heat level gets too high, um, then the comparator will output a stronger and stronger redstone signal. And then you can, of course, loop this back into another redstone port or the controller to turn it off with a knock gate, of course, because you want to make sure that the reactor is off when the heat is too high. So that is um, two things that you can use the redstone port for, turning on the reactor and also uh, reading the heat level. And I think that's pretty much all the basics of how the molten salt reactor works. Um, of course, it's actually incredibly complicated to set up a really, really good design. Um, this is a this is a pretty poor one here because I'm pretty much using only about half the reactor, and it's also. Um, you know, it's not a great design in the same way that I planned out that one over there. Um, but remember, you can basically do the exact same thing, except you have to account for the fact that you're going to have to have pipes and such uh, inside of the structure. Um, so yeah, I, the reason I didn't go into so much detail uh, as, as over there is because, it, as you can see, it is basically the same, but it's a fluid version um, with some complications. 
Uh, if you do have any questions, of course, head into the comments and let me know if I didn't explain anything properly. Uh, and uh, I will see you in the next video where we move on to the heat exchanger. And the heat exchanger is how you actually start to use your hot coolant to actually produce steam. Uh, and then, of course, you can use that in your turbines from extreme reactors, from mechanism, uh, from advanced generators, whatever. So thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you in that episode.